Welcome, welcome once again to another edition of the Savior's Cross broadcast. I'm Pastor Jeff Williams, uh, along with Brother Darrell Purser, Jacob Sherrill, and uh, Brother Scott Sherrill, Jacob's dad. Uh, just so glad to have you tonight uh, as we continue studying the Word of God um, on this broadcast. And um, I, want to, I want to put this forward tonight. Uh, as we start, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, Bible studies out there, uh, a lot of opportunities, especially online, to, to, to get involved with Bible studies. And I thank the Lord for social media in that regard, that we can share the gospel, even though it seems like times the enemy will try to, to fight us and, and stop us from sharing the gospel. But uh, this platform um, for whatever reason, uh, the Lord has allowed it to go forth, um, and we thank, we thank the Lord for that. Um, this broadcast and this Bible study uh, may be just a little bit different uh, in the way that uh, we approach the Word of God. And what I mean by that is, is that uh, we attempt to view the entire portrait of God's Word through the lens of the cross. Uh, we believe and teach that um, that the Bible is the story of redemption. That's what it's all about. Um, it's its main theme, um, and I would say even go beyond that. The whole theme uh, of the Word of God is the redemption uh, of mankind through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we attempt to look through God's Word. Um, we would ask you, uh, as you study God's Word and as you look at God's Word, uh, you also may um, have maybe misunderstanding verses or maybe find things in God's Word that's hard for you to understand. Um, I would give you this piece of, uh, of, of advice, if I may. Um, if you'll start viewing Scripture in light of Calvary, um, the light will start coming on. The light uh, of scriptural understanding will start coming on. If you view everything, everything that you read, uh, everything that um, God allows you to, to, to see in his perfect, perfect law of liberty, if you'll view it and uh, analyze it in view of Calvary, never let Calvary get too far out of your sight when you're reading God's word. Uh, it'll, it'll take you a, a path that, that, that is not profitable. But if you will always keep the cross in view, and what we mean by that is Jesus and his finished work, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. If it had not been for that, there would have been no redemption. Uh, and that person, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary, oh, what a great work it was, and what a great work it is. Uh, it is a perpetual work. The finished work of Calvary uh, has not wore out. Uh, it's not past misery. Uh, it's not uh, a historical event that, that has been laid aside for 2,000 years ago. The Bible describes the, we're gonna look at that tonight. The Bible describes uh, the finished work of Calvary as the power of God, the gospel, the good news is the power of God unto salvation. And um, so we would ask you maybe to grab your Bibles. We're going to continue our study tonight in uh, 1 Corinthians as we're going we're gonna to make a, an attempt with the help of the Lord to go through this uh, epistle to the church at Corinth. Um, and we're going to pick back up uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 18. And I would ask you uh, to, to go ahead right now and like uh, if, if you enjoy this broadcast, like it, like it uh, hit like and share. Um, it's not about the messengers here. It's about the message that, uh, that we're trying to portray because, man, the lost and dying world needs the cross. Yes. And yes, even the church needs the cross um, and, and what he's accomplished there. So if you'd like and share that uh, for us, we would greatly appreciate it. We're going to be reading... Uh, out of the Expositor Study Bible, such a privilege to be able to use this in our in our Bible study. It gives us some real good insight on the Scripture. We're going to be starting at verse number 18 
1 Corinthians chapter number 1 is where we'll pick up. And I'll ask Brother Scott to, to start for us. For the preaching. The message. Of the cross is to them who perish foolishness. Spiritual things cannot be discerned by unredeemed people. But that doesn't matter. The cross much must be preached just the same, even as we shall see. But unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. The cross is the power of God simply because, and I like this statement, the cross is the power of God simply because it was there that the total sin debt was paid, giving the Holy Spirit in whom the power resides latitude to work mighty within our lives. For it is written, Isaiah 29 and 14, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. This speaks to those who are wise in their own eyes, in effect having forsaken the ways of the Lord. Where is the wise? This presents the first of three classes of learned people who lived in that day. Where is the scribe? This pertained to the Jewish theologians of that day. Where is the disputer of this world? This speaks of the Greeks who were seekers of, the, of mystical and metaphysical interpretations. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? This pertains to what God did in sending His Son to redeem humanity, which He did by the cross. All the wisdom of the world could not do this. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Man's puny wisdom, even the best he has to offer, cannot come to know God in any manner. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Preaching the cross. To save them who believe. Paul is not dealing with the art of preaching here, but with what is preached. For the Jews require a sign. The signs, the sign of the Messiah taking the throne and making Israel a great nation once again. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. They sought that such solved the human problem. However, if it did, why were they ever seeking after more wisdom? But we preach Christ crucified. This is the foundation of the Word of God and thereby salvation. Unto the Jews a stumbling block. The cross was a stumbling block. And unto the Greeks foolishness. Both found it difficult to accept as God a dead man hanging on a cross, for such Christ was to them. But unto them which are called. Refers to those who accept the call for the entirety of mankind is invited. Both Jews and Greeks. Actually stands for both Jews and Gentiles. Christ, the power of God. What he did at the cross atoned for all sin, thereby making it possible for the Holy Spirit to exhibit his power within our lives. And the wisdom of God. This wisdom devised a plan of salvation which pardoned guilty men and at the same time vindicated and glorified the justice of God which stands out as the, wisdom, as the wisest and most remarkable plan of all time. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. God achieves the mightiest deeds by the humblest of means. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. This refers to that which men take to be weak, but actually is not the cross. And uh, I appreciate that, uh, Brother Scott, reading that text here. And we want to go back and uh, see if we can uh, sort of go back through these verses. And the main uh, crutch here uh, in this is the issue of wisdom and uh, the, the issue of man's wisdom and God's wisdom. And uh, as we get into it, as we get into these verses and, and the men make some comments, um, we're going to see, first of all, that man, humanity, we, us, we're always seeking out our own, out of our own wisdom and our own way and our own means 
to solve the human dilemma. Uh, the human dilemma right now is um, probably at, at the worst uh, as we've seen it in, in many, many years. I know that we all talk about it on this desk. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's not the, uh, uh, we're not living in Kansas anymore, so to speak. Um, it, the, 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 the world has gone haywire. Uh, insanity uh, is running rampant. And the wisdom of man is seeking is seeking how to solve the human dilemma. And we're going to see here uh, as Paul begins to break this down. Um, we see here, gentlemen, in this verse, starting at verse number 17, excuse me, number 18, he says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, or those that don't know the Lord, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Probably one of the most powerful verses in all of the New Testament, that which we've just read. Uh, gentlemen, who would like to, to start out with verse number 18, make a comment on, on, on this? Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, kind of breaking this up, looking at the foolishness first. It says, preaching of the crosses to them who perish. Foolishness. So it's the, it, it, it's the, it's the man or, or woman who's not been uh, renewed by Christ, been mm -hmm. born again, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the Bible says it, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Mm -hmm. So we got uh, Satan blinding people. Uh, uh, another verse, uh, and it's uh, later on Corinthians, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So uh, by by the fall, uh, man's already uh, uh, not spiritually discerned, can, can't discern the things of God, and uh, and he's being blinded by Satan. Uh, it, <laughs> It's amazing. You, you, you read things, uh, God, through the Holy Spirit, had the prophets speak at their time and time period, but th they're revelant today. Mm -hmm. It's like God would use that today. It's just as strong and meant for, for these times. Hosea 9, 7 says, the prophet is considered a fool, mm -hmm. and the spiritual man is considered mad or crazy for the multitude why because of the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred they loved their sin so much mm -hmm. and they were bonded by it just you think of marriage uh, a man and wife become one they've become one with their own sin to where it it just it just doesn't make sense and right. as a young man uh reading this it made me think uh when I was young and I, I was just out in this world and I love rock music and I had old Camaro and stuff like mm -hmm. that, there's a lot of uh, the top 10 songs is out there and there's heavy metal stuff. And uh, I had a, a tape and even then knew what was right and wrong, deep down. And I would skip over one song and, and it was The God That Failed and it was about Christ being, and I thought, you know, I, I like to listen to them other two songs. That's the only reason I got right, to say, I right. tell myself. I'm just listening to that. But, to read, to read the little thing in the cassette, and it was, I was just awful. It was just cause, and that, and it, but it made me bring bring back to think about that. It was foolish. They, the people who who wrote that, was saying, you know, Jesus died on the cross. God failed because he come and, 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 and you know and they just got rid. Of it. They did, they can't comprehend. Right. Absolutely. What God did. Absolutely. 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 You just have to believe what Jesus said. Nobody takes my life. Mm -hmm. I laid down freely because yes, I had the power to raise it back up. Right. That statement right there, please, is Jesus and God are one. Yes. Just as the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Yeah. Don't ask me to try to explain the Trinity because yeah. we'd all be going. <laughs> <laughs> that's another Bible that's, study. That's, ain't it? <laughs> as Jill said, that's the puniness of our mind. Right. You know, yeah. science is even saying man uses one fifth of 2% of his brain. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was the fall in the garden. Yeah. 
But for me to explain the Trinity, it'd be like me going down to the ocean with a with a bucket and look out there and say, "I'm gonna put this ocean in this bucket." That's right. Yeah. You know, That's right. Lean not toward your own understanding. That's right. That's right. James in the book of James does say the Lord through the the, the 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 disciple James. If any of you lack wisdom, ask. God is a generous giver. He'll give it to you liberally without reproach. That's not that's not giving you wisdom to make it big on the stock market. Or <clears throat> He's not going to give you the wisdom of this world, even though we end up, and we do use His wisdom and apply it. But when He says He will give you wisdom, it's His wisdom, right? And His wisdom is what's helped me in this book one end to the other to learn how to look at it from an eternal perspective because that's the way God, my father, looks at it. Right. Our father. Yeah. And that wisdom right there, when you start looking at it from an eternal perspective, you'll see Scripture fulfilling Scripture. You'll see the Bible testify of itself. Even God the Father, His testimony, you know, God's testimony. This is God saying this. That you may have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that life is in his son. You'll find that in 1 John chapter 5. But it's the wisdom. That's why it says, and I think you mentioned Proverbs. It's the Proverbs of the song. Mm -hmm. It says, as far as concern of wisdom, buy it and selleth it not. Yeah. Well, how in the world do you buy that? Well, you can't buy it with money. You buy it. By your alone time with God, asking Him, you know, I've had people to come up and say, "Well, I, I don't understand the whole Bible." Well, stick to the part that you do understand. Be obedient to that part because He makes a promise in here. If you're obedient to the little bit of light He gives you, He will give you more. I think some translations faith use the word faith, but if you're obedient to that much. He gives it more. He mm -hmm. says to uh, whom has mo more, more will be given. That's right. You know, but he also says, I mean, that's where you come in and ask God for his wisdom. Who has more, more is required. So if he gives you more, he requires you to spend more time with him. And he can give you more wisdom, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm using popular language. I mean, that's the best way I could I can explain it where we would have understanding. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Paul even says that and he says I use uh, terminology. Mm -hmm. Local terminology. Plain you know. speech. So plain speech, there you go. Yeah. So that you have wisdom. Or have that you have understanding. Mm -hmm. But understanding comes by knowing the holy ones, the holy ones of this book. Right. The one that gives us the oracle of God. Right. The apostles, the, the 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 prophets, and he summed it up in all in one statement: love God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All the prophets and pro and, and 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 the apostles, the disciples, all the teaching, all of it hangs on those those two commandments. That's right. Right. Amen. 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 It's just, you know, we're talking about wisdom. I mean, it's just, he'll give it to you if you ask. But he's not going to give you, he's not going to give you anything to, to harm you. Now, you know, God may hurt you, but he will never harm you. Right. You know, right. Right. Because it's blessed are the wounds of a friend. Amen. You know, That's and right. if we have a friend in Jesus, he, he, he's going to. He may do stuff to hurt us, and it may not seem uh, pleasant at the time, but if you endure through it, knowing that he's by your side, helping you through it, it's all worth it in the end. Amen. 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 Jacob. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I was reading over it uh, about, you know, the ones who are perishing, you know, the message of the cross is foolish, but the ones who are saved is power. God, I was talking to my dad uh just a little earlier about you know, you're in your workplace and certain things that the men talk about 
or the way that they see the world. When you're not, when I wasn't near the cross, it become numb to me. And, you know, I couldn't see what was wrong with what they were saying. But doing this podcast, uh, doing this broadcast and everything, I've gotten to be closer to the cross, and I'm so thankful for it. Yes. And now that I am closer to the cross, it's almost like God has pulled back the curtain on my eyes. And I'm seeing, you know, how these men are foolish for for yes. almost mocking. Yes. The, you know, the the very breath they're given. That's right. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. We we see here that that the apostle Paul is uh, contrasting the natural man's wisdom to spiritual wisdom. And spiritual, anything spiritual in the right uh, sense of the term, the Holy Spirit, anything in that vein uh, is naturally going to be more uh, beneficial to us to try to live for God. And we see here, if we'll notice in these scriptures, and even if you wanted, if we wanted to back up to verse 17, and, and as we look at verse 18, we'll see here that, that Paul is, is contrasting the wisdom of man versus the wisdom of the cross or the wisdom of the atonement or the wisdom of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the wisdom that's being weighed here. Um, in, in, in the uh, eyes of man, in the eyes of the natural man, as the brothers already, already spoke well of, the natural man is not going to be able to see the wisdom that is found uh, in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's foolishness. It's foolishness to him. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there, there seems to be a blindness, uh, and sometimes um, the blindness is... Um, it, it, it's taken on in such a way that we, we, we would rather have darkness than the light. Um, but the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ is the wisest. Listen, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, came down, wrapped himself in flesh. Everyone, most Christians know the story. Maybe some don't. But God himself, Jesus Christ, the, the only begotten son of the father, he came down and he, uh, the Bible says that it behooved him or it became him to become like unto his brethren. In other words, he became a human. He came in the form of humanity and he took upon him the form of a servant and by taking on this form of a servant, he became obedient even unto the death of the cross. The cross, in Jesus and his finished work, is the wisest, the wisest act that humanity will ever know. If you, you think of all of the wisdom in the universe, you think of all of the wisdom, even Solomon's wisdom. As a matter of fact, David told Solomon to seek after the wisdom that he would share with him. And the wisdom that David shared with him was the wisdom of the sacrifice, which pointed back to the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even Solomon, in all of the, the wisdom that he asked God for, and God blessed him with all of these things, even at the end, even at the end of everything that Solomon went through, and Solomon had the riches and everything, he counted everything else as vanity and said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What, what is the whole duty of man? To, to fear God, keep his commandments. And in, in New Testament uh, uh, way of thinking, the, uh, the keeping his commandments is placing our faith in Jesus Christ, placing our faith in the man that kept the law perfectly, placing our faith. That is the wisdom of God. And someone might say, well, how is it wise? Why is it wise for me to, to shut out every, everything else? Why, is it, why should I not seek the wisdom of the world? Number one, the wisdom of the world has not, has not had a very good track record. 
The wisdom of the world has, has a terrible track record when it comes to dealing with the problems of humanity. We're speaking of hatred. We're speaking of even war. We're speaking of hating our brother. Uh, we're speaking of, of, of vengeance. Uh, we're speaking of, uh, we're living in a time now uh, and we talk about it all the time. You can turn on the news. There's such, there seems to be such a spirit of hatred towards, towards our fellow man. I mean, we, we, we really, we really have, and, and the government, the government has thrown its wisdom at it. The government has thrown money at it to try to deal with the human d dilemma. Uh, religion has, has thrown their um, two cents worth in, and we're going to see that here in some verses below. And we've also will see in the verses below that even philosophy and psychology, they've give it, they've give it the good old boy try. They, uh, psychiatry, psychology, uh, new age thinking, um, the, uh, the wisdom of the world. Uh, and Paul will mention in a few moments the disputers. Uh, that would that would debate. We have the great uh, halls of, of of theologians. We have the great colleges of thought. Those that are uh, the Socrates and and Plato and these great the great thinkers of the world. Even even at the end of the day, they had no answer for the human dilemma. They had no answer for what the world needs. And God, in the, in, in the wisdom of God, in the wisdom of God, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, the Lord Jesus Christ, him becoming man. And, and as a man, he paid for our sins. He paid and satisfied the sin debt. It's, it, but it goes much further. He not only broke the penalty of sin and paid for the penalty of sin. Here's where, where the rubber meets the road for humanity. He broke the power of sin. He broke the grip of sin. He broke the grip of sin through his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is, according to the scripture, that is the wisdom of God. And we see here that there's a lot of people, guys, and I want you to, maybe we could comment on that because I, I want our sometimes our for our broadcast to work to to meet where we are today. Right. You know what's yes. going on today, and um, uh, can can we not see um, how that our politicians now they're scrambling, they're scrambling to make wise decisions for this country, and it's it's it it it's really a joke. When <laughs> you know, and I'm being I'm trying to be. Polite, because I respect I respect our politicians. I respect our government, because God tells me to do that. But the wisdom that is found in men right now seems to compound the problems rather than a solution. What what say you? Uh, as we're reading here, uh, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. Uh, in Ephesians, it says, "And ye." hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, the pathway, the way everybody goes. Mm -hmm. we, we learn from each other as we're, we're born into this world mm -hmm. to go a certain path. But mm -hmm. it says uh, uh, the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the mm -hmm. air. Satan has uh, influenced uh, what we see and everything's corrupted now but we're you know in times past this is the way we we live right and and, and said it's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience mm -hmm. uh our wisdom is corrupted you know that's a good uh, point you know uh, uh our way of thinking our love is corrupted now let me stop you, know? you there for yes, a minute sir, brother scott right and let you expound on that a little bit you made a very very a very very good statement there that our wisdom is corrupted our will, man's wisdom is corrupted. What would you say to someone to say, what do you mean by man's wisdom is corrupted? Everything, every decision is made from a self-centered heart. 
you know, if I tell you that thing, well, is it going to benefit me? You know, uh, when people say, uh, well, couples get together, I love you. Do they really understand what it means to love? I'm going to sacrifice everything I've got to take care of you. It says, I love you as long as you're pleasing me. Right. You know, as long as you, you, you know, uh, in a marriage statement, if, as long as you're cleaning the house and you're doing this and you're doing that and, and all that, you know, what am I getting out of it? As long as you're performing what makes me happy, my selfish desire, then then I love you. Well, that love's supposed to be unconditional, right, you know. Right. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, and yep. Jesus dying on the cross. They, everything he preached, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. If you, if somebody needs your coat, give them the other one also. Right. So it didn't. It, it preaching didn't to the self centered man don't make no sense at all. Right. And then God said, "I'm going to take your place. You should be the one dying, but right. I'm going to do it." Why would that? It wouldn't make no sense to them either. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like say if a computer gets a virus and all of a sudden nothing works on it. And it's, it, right. you know, you hit this page and 15 pages comes up. Right. We've been, the, our natural man's been corrupt. That's right. You know? Through our, we, 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 one could say that we were born that way. Born, we yes. were born that way through, through Adam, being born in Adam. Yeah. And, and, like you said, our thoughts for 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 me to come up with a solution that say say us four sitting here and I'm looking for a wise solution to benefit us all and uh, us four and and you know I'm just using this as an example. Like you said, in my thought process, my, my in my thought process of wisdom, it is corrupted to the point. That I'm going to come up with a solution that may fit us all, but I'm going to make sure it fits me. Yeah, yes, I'm exactly. going to make sure that I am the beneficiary of the wise <laughs> That's decision. That's good. And uh, being being corrupted in that way, uh, that makes man's solution futile. Uh, man will never be able to come up with a solution within his own self, but when we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are baptized into that act on Calvary. We have been, the Holy Spirit plunges us, as, as the old song says, we're plunged into that crimson flow and I, we are buried with him, and, but we're also raised up in newness of life. And the new man, the new man is Christ in us, and Christ in us is wisdom. That is the wisdom of, of, of God. That's a wisdom that, that is not self-centered. That's a wisdom that uh, can carry us into eternity. That's a wisdom that, um, that makes me want to reconcile with my brother. Uh, the wisdom that is found in the cross is the only answer for humanity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at Proverbs. Solomon wrote those, but what did he ask God? To give me wisdom and understanding, to make sound judgment. Mm -hmm. And God was pleased with that because he didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for this. He didn't ask for that. He just, because he knew he was going to be king. Yeah. He needed wisdom to make that sound judgment. And we see that where the two women had a baby. Mm -hmm. And one died and they switched. They didn't know whose baby it was. Yeah. Well, he used the wisdom. He took a sword. He said, I'll give a half of it to each of you. And the other woman cried out, no, give it to her. And he knew that that woman was her mother because mm -hmm. she cared for that baby. Yeah. That wisdom, like we've been talking about, our wisdom, our wisdom is corrupt. That's why he gives us the Proverbs, lean not toward your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Recognize him in all things. He'll make you pass level. Uh, what looks right in man's eyes, ways endeth in death. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because man is not, not wise enough to figure out all these problems. Mm -hmm. Give you one example. God used a little bug because people had made football, NASCAR, all these things 
of God instead of going to the house of the Lord, instead of worshiping the Lord. Just mind you of Egypt, all the plagues, because they were, he, the plagues that he done was to show that he was a greater God than their God. If we don't have time to get into all that right now. <laughs> but all that, just a few years ago, he shut it all down with a bug. Man's idea was a vaccine. People took vaccines, two or three of them. People still dying. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the subtotal of man, and it's taught in our college today, is the subtotal of man is his uh, uh, education. Adam and Eve were educated by the best educator they ever was before yes. they fell. Amen. Well, uh, the subtotal of man is the environment. They lived in paradise yeah. before the fall. Well, the subtotal of man is this. They, they, like you said, in their intellect, that's why Jesus at the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit. That means you have to lay your intellectual knowledge in the dust from which it comes. And then you start filling it with the things of God. That's good. Amen. See, it reminds me where we doing the Bible study in Galatians. Uh, our corrupted judgment... We think we can fix ourselves. That's that's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. it. Yeah, we can fix ourselves. Uh, the power of the cross. Uh, uh, it made me think. Uh, Luke four eighteen says, Jesus was actually to me telling us about the power of the cross. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted." to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised or, or, or what we consider oppressed. Mm -hmm. That's what the cross is for. That's right. All that. That's right. You know, it's the answer for all that. Right. You know? Amen. Amen. And that, what you have just said, is the wisdom of God. That's right. That is the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. Jacob, you have anything to add? Okay. All right, let's... Uh, uh, and, and this this one verse is is uh, inexhaustible. You will, the verse eighteen, but we'll we'll look at verse nineteen. It says, "For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent." And this this is referring back to Isaiah chapter twenty nine, verse number fourteen. It's this speaks of those who are wise in their own eyes and uh boy i tell you what we're living we're living in that that day now people that are wise uh in their own eyes and we're we're certainly in a in an age of of uh, man uh, is puffed up in his own wisdom uh it's it, we're living in a my way or the highway mm -hmm. type of uh, mentality now um, but but the Bible says that God said I will destroy the wisest the wisest way of thinking the wisest thoughts that could come out of a human mind to deal with humanity. God said I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it by one one thing. I'm going to destroy it by sending my son to die on the cross. Because my son dying on the cross is going to address everything. It's going to address all of the things that, that Brother Scott said, uh, referred to in uh, the Gospels and, and even in Isaiah. Uh, it, it is for the, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. That's what Jesus said, that the Spirit of God came upon him and anointed him to preach the gospel. And the gospel is the story of the cross. Any way you look at it, any way, and that was God's theme, that was God's message, that is God's wisdom. And just, just for the sake of conversation, the wisdom that is found in the cross is what God has planned before the foundation of the world to deal with you right now with what you're going on in your life. With what you are dealing with, or what anybody at this desk is dealing with right now, you, 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 uh, people that may say, "Man, I'm having, I'm having marriage trouble right now," 
I'm, I'm right on the verge. I'm on the verge of divorce um, or, 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 or whatever the case. I'm, my, uh, my child has, has run away or um, I'm, I seem to be under this oppressive spirit all the time. I, I have this heaviness on me all the time. Um, the, the, the examples could go on and on. God had God has one answer for that. He has one answer, and it is a wise answer. It is Jesus Christ and His finished work. And when you place your faith in that, this is God's way. He said, "I will destroy." He said, "I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to naught or nothing. Uh, I bring to nothing." the understanding of the prudent. He would go on to say in verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath God, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And we see here that it referred to, to the wise, the wise rabbis of that day. Uh, they were considered um, Paul was in this class before he was converted on the Damascus Road. He was considered part of the, um, I guess you would say, the uh, aura of the Sanhedrin, uh, the Jewish council, uh, the hierarchy, if you will, in Judaism. Uh, he, uh, he was considered uh, one of the wise. The scribe were the Jewish, the Jewish theologians of that time. The, the, the disputers of the world, that uh, holds reference to the Greeks and uh, the philosophers. And, um, but Paul was saying, even in all of these scenarios, there, was, there is no human that exists that can come up with a workable plan for man's problem. Amen. It all had to be done by the cross. Amen. And many of you today, you are seeking wisdom uh, or answers, you can use the word answers. You're seeking answers for a problem in your life right now. Uh, and you believe in the Bible. Uh, you believe in the Lord. You believe in God. You may be a member of a church somewhere, but you've got this, this unsurmountable problem right now. You've got this gigantic mountain uh, that is plaguing you in your life. Well, God's wanting to show you his wisdom. God's wanting to show you his wisdom. And, and let me tell you something. Before the wisdom of God will work for you, we've got to be willing to let the Holy Spirit destroy, or as Brother Darrell put it, lay to rest or put in the dust our wisdom. Because God's, God's wisdom will not attempt to compete with your wisdom. My wisdom, God's wisdom is not going to compete with Jeff's wisdom. God is waiting on Jeff to lay down his wisdom, to lay down his intellect, to lay down his thoughts on the problems that's plaguing my life, lay down my wisdom, destroy it, put it to naught, put it to naught the understanding of my prudency, put, just put it to the side and embrace, embrace the wisest plan on the face of the planet. And that's by placing my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or i.e. the cross. Again, mm. we're still in the scripture. Paul is, Paul is saying here for the preaching or the message. The word preaching here uh, in the Greek carries the word logos, logos, which means word. So it could be said for the word of the cross. It could be say it could it, we could say the preaching of the cross or a message. The word logos can can mean a message. Thus, we have the term the message of the cross. That's that's what Paul Paul was speaking of. He was everywhere he went, everywhere he went, man's problem, and it, it not only the cross not only deals with man's problem, it also dealt with the problem of demon spirits. The cross, the cross has covered all the bases. Jesus Christ and his finished work. It's the most amazing, the most wisest thing that you and I will ever see. Uh, any, any other comments in that area? Well, just on the, the disputer, as where is the disputer? You know, you think oh, the Greeks, they love to debate wisdom right. against wisdom. Right. And with the gospel, I, now I, I, I love 
all kinds of preaching, and I watch street preachers, and I and I see a lot of times they start their uh, things off by uh, de debating, you know, and arguing facts, you know, kind of proving, disproving God. To me, the gospel is not to be debated. It's it, it's God. God touches your heart and, and opens your eyes. I mean. The, you cannot prove a fact to sit there and argue with somebody and they say, you know what, you made a good point. I think I'll get saved. That ain't right. going to happen. Right. It's not by the wisdom of men. Right. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a heart matter. Yes. God, seeing that you're really a sinner. Right. God opening your eyes. So uh, with that said, I just, uh, they, they uh, what was it? I don't want to read it. Isaiah 35, 8. Sure. It says, it shall be called... And I'm the path, and I'm thinking uh, I, I, the path of the narrow way. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, "It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, and it shall be for for those the wayfaring men, the traveling people th through this world." The path was talking about. Though fools shall not err there, therein. I'm so glad that I don't have to be smart to right. come to Christ. That's he right. said, "Even if they're fools, they they won't they, they won't err." That's um, right. You know, because it's not based on their wisdom. That's right. It's based on Christ. Amen. Amen. Like Good. Just talking about Paul a while ago. He even said, "What I lost for the cause of Christ, I counted as done." Yeah. yeah. Now Paul, in, in today's vernacular, he would have the equivalency of a triple PhD. Oh yeah. But all that, what he thought in his own life. And God used that, knocked him off his high horse, so to speak. Yeah. And the Lord will do that. He's knocked me off of it many times. He'll do that. Yeah. I mean, in fact, he says, uh, <laughs> another one of the Proverbs, don't be like the mule or the horse, or you have to be trained with the bit, because God has one for you. Yes, he does. And he, he, he will let you go, and then all of a sudden, yeah. Mm -hmm. He puts you back on the straight and narrow. But... It's not, I don't know how to really explain it, or, you know, to use popular language itself, maybe the last verse, if we have time to get to it in 25, for the foolishness of God. That's not saying God is foolish. It's wrote in the language like I was talking about a while right, ago. Right, right. So we can understand it. Right. What is foolish to man yeah. is the wisdom of God. That's right. That's how Paul said you know, I'll boast in my infirmities because when I am weak, I am strong. We're not to boast in anything but the Lord. You know, I, I ain't going to get tied up in that, but that's a, that's a whole different sermon mm -hmm. right there. But, mm -hmm. you know, first, you know, I mentioned the Beatitudes a while ago. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's laying your intellect to become spiritually bankrupt poor in spirit I'm not talking about like woe is me oh no what am I going to I'm not talking about that you have to become poor in spirit spiritually bankrupt and then God will, if you ask him and rest him in the right order and do it his way he will start filling you with the things and the goodness of himself. That's right. That's right. That, but you have to come to that point. You have, Jesus even said, deny thyself, pick up thy cross That's daily right. and follow after me. That's right. right. We have to deny ourselves. Yes. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not who we are. He loves us in spite of who we are. Yeah. And he loves us in spite of what we are. Right. Because he came and gave himself for us so he could give himself back to us to redeem mankind. Right. But that's my that's what I'm trying to say now. He loves you enough. Don't lean. That Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 has helped me so much. He'll bring it to remembrance. Don't lean on your understanding. Recognize in him. I had a preacher put it this way. Recognize him and he will make your paths level. I heard a preacher put it like this. If you recognize him and pray to him, depend on him, he will warm up one of his supernatural bulldozers, 
put one of his supernatural angels on it, and he will mow that mountain down if he's got something on the other side of that mountain for you to do. Right, right. We don't lean, I don't lean to my own understanding. That's right. I say, Lord, you know, I always try to thank him, even in, the, in you know, the song says, you know, in the bad times, all joy. In the good times, all joy. Yes. In the heat of the battle, all joy. Yes. Count it all joy. It may not seem like uh, joy at the time it's happened, but it will produce the joy of the Lord. Right, right. One of the things, too, and that's that's so good, Brother Darrell, um, when it comes to this, this thing about wisdom, and if we all, like we've all been saying tonight, it's hard for me to lay my wisdom down. Right. It's hard for me to lay my point of view down. It's hard. It is so hard for me to, to be willing because my flesh has, a, a, as a brother said, we're, that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That it, I have a tendency in my flesh to, to be self-centered and, and, and prideful. I mean, let's just be honest. We do. So my prideful self, my self-centeredness, number one, I want to be right. I want to get the last word in. Um, and my point of view is it's going to be the best at the table. Uh, no matter who, who else says anything, you know, I, I feel like my idea always is, is going to be better. That's, that's, that's human. That's, that's humanity. And uh, as Brother Darrell has said, to, 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 to point toward Calvary as a solution for my problems and the world's problems, a man dying on the cross, my pride and my intellect, and my self-centeredness says, that's foolish. Mm -hmm. That's foolish. That, you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me you have wasted, you four men have wasted an hour of my time by telling me that Jesus, this man Jesus dying on the cross will solve my problems. It's foolish. It's foolish. That is a natural, that's a natural instinctive answer for fallen man. And in some cases, it's even a natural answer for someone that's saved because they're operating in the natural. You can be, you can be saved, um, signed and ready to be delivered. Uh, as far as your soul, but you can be walking according to the flesh. You could, you, you could have the mentality that, hey, brother, brothers, I'm going to heaven. Jesus died for me. Uh, he died on the cross, and, and, and I'm not going to hell. I'm, I'm, I'm glory bound with the hammer down. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. But as far as the cross being relevant to my life today, and how I am, I could apply that to my life today. I just don't, I don't know about all of that. That's, you know, I've got so much going on and, and, and my wisdom does not see it that way. Well, that's, that's our problem. Our wisdom sees the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is God's wisdom. This is the wisdom of God. This is not the wisdom of, of, uh, of Jacob or Jeff or Daryl or Scott. This is the wisdom of God. This is not the wisdom of the preacher. This is the wisdom of God that God says, I am going to send my son to take care of whatever that humanity lost in the fall. That's what he did. He took care. His redemptive plan takes care of everything that we lost in the Garden of Eden and everything that entered in into our life. But you have to be willing, you have to be willing to lay it down. You have to be willing to lay down your wisdom. And sometimes you have to really be willing to lay down your religious w wisdom. Yep. Your, your religious wisdom is probably the most dangerous type of false wisdom there is. 
is the wisdom of a works-based religion, a works-based salvation, a works-based type of holiness, a works-based walk with God. That's your wisdom. That's the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom some, some man made up or some group of men made up by doing this and following that and doing this and doing that. That's man's wisdom. God's, God's wisdom is not within a hundred miles of that. God's wisdom is wrapped up in his son, is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And when he bowed his head, the Bible says when he gave up the ghost right before he did, he hollered out, it is finished. Amen. And I was talking to this lady today and a dear saint of God. We all need to ask the question, what, though, what do those three words mean? What do those three words mean to you? It is finished. What was finished? What was finished? Was he saying, my life's ended. I'm about to die. It is finished. That's not what he meant. Amen. That is not what he meant. He meant the redemptive plan, the wisdom, the wisdom of Jehovah God and the plan that was formed before the foundation of the world that Peter sp spoke of. This was what was about to be complete. It was, it was as, if, as if it was the day that, uh, the seventh day of creation and, and God ceased. He rested. He didn't rest because he was tired. He rested because everything was done. And that's what Jesus said. It is finished as creation in its perfect order right now. As the sun is on its axis and the moon is on its axis and earth is twirling around this sun and how everything's held in perfect order by the Son of God. So the redemptive plan of mankind, it is finished. Everything has been made right. Everything has been prepared. And if you'll place your faith in that, in Jesus and his work, then the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit can begin speaking to you. You, you may be be needing a word of wisdom. You may be asking God for a word of knowledge. You may have something in your life that you really need an answer and you definitely need it to be the right answer because you've got one shot. You've got one shot. If you get the wrong answer, everything's, everything's lost. You place your faith in Jesus Christ and his finished work and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. He'll give you, he'll give you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom that comes directly from the throne room. He'll give you a wise, sound word that'll come from him. And we do that by placing our faith in him. We've run out of time, uh, and I, I appreciate this, guys. I knew that we, wasn't, we wouldn't get far uh, in these verses, but um, just, just keep in mind, uh, folks, for the preaching of the cross or the message of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, Amen. it is the power of God. What a blessed, Amen. blessed, Amen. blessed time. If you don't know the Lord tonight uh, as your personal Savior, we don't never want to close a broadcast without inviting you uh, to come to the Lord, invite you to, uh, to give your life to Christ. Uh, that too, <laughs> just making one step toward the Lord Jesus Christ in faith uh, will definitely be one of the wisest moves you've ever made. Uh, moving from death unto life, moving from darkness into the light, moving from the broad way into the narrow way. Um, Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the best, best decision you'll ever make. If you believe on Him, as the Scripture has said, if you believe with your heart, you believe in your heart, that he is who he says he is. And he is who he says he is regardless of whether you believe it or not. That's right. Just because you, you may choose not to believe it does not negate the fact that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. But if you will believe in your heart that he is who he says he is and then confess with your mouth the same thing. Lord Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are. And I'm asking you to come into my heart right now. I'm asking you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. 
I turn away from my old life and I turn to you. I'm not adding any kind of works. I'm not adding anything to your finished work. I'm turning away from one life. I want you to acknowledge that. I'm turning away from my way of thinking. I'm turning away from my way of thinking to your way of thinking. And if you'll do that, the Lord God, he'll instantly save you. And he'll begin imparting his wisdom to you. He'll be, you'll begin making different decisions as you continually place your faith in him and his work. You begin making decisions, wise decisions, even on your job, even in your relationships, even in your church work. You begin, you, God will show you things. You, he'll give you, he'll, he'll make you wise unto salvation. He'll give you the wisdom that comes from above. We love you and we thank you so much. I want to thank these gentlemen uh, once again for their awesome uh, input. Next week, we'll try to be continuing. Tell somebody about the Savior's Cross broadcast. Uh, tell somebody about Spirit of Life Church. We're located at 450 South Myrtle School Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, if you'd help spread the word for us. We love the Lord. And Lord willing, we'll see you next Tuesday. God bless. Bye-bye.